Welcome back once again guys here to the hillside today I'm going to show you how to revive plants you may have bought on clearance or ones that may be past their prime from the nursery or big box store. So let's go ahead and get into it right now. All right guys so these are Gerbera daisies or Gerbera daisies depending how you pronounce it. Now when I got these uh, two days ago on clearance they were completely wilted down all of them. I did put a little bit of water on them just to kind of perk them back up for the purpose of just keeping them alive for this video. But just imagine the entire plant looked just like this. But that being said, uh, my first tip is when you get the clearance plant home, the first thing you need to do is get some water on it, okay? Uh, let me show you the best way to do it that I found. All right, so this tray here is the bottom for a seed uh, starting tray, but it just happens to fit this perfectly. This is some rainwater. I would uh, prefer to use rainwater if at all possible over uh, tap water, unless you've let it set out for a couple of days to let the, the chlorine and things like that evaporate out of it. But all you're gonna do, and this fits perfectly, make sure your plants have a nice drink of water. Now, if you wanna let this soak overnight, you can. If you wanna let this uh, stay for just a couple of hours, that's good as well. But the point is, the roots need to get saturated, okay? The reason this plant is on clearance is that the leaves are, are shot, okay? It's past its prime. It is droopy, it's not gonna sell, it's you know 50% off or maybe more, who knows. But the point is to bring this guy back, you need to get water on it first thing. That's the first priority is getting the water on it. Um, the bottom watering helps, does help wick it up, helps the plant to slowly rehydrate and absorb moisture, which is gonna start, like I said, overnight. These droopy little leaves like this have been perked back up just like that. Step number two, you need a pair of scissors or some cutters, whatever you want to call them. Okay, now what's gonna happen after you've let these plants soak overnight? Uh, the leaves that are viable and the healthy ones that are coming back, you see, are perking back up. What's not gonna happen is all this stuff back here, these dead leaves, all this kind of stuff, get it off the plant right away. These old leaves like this, it may seem cruel guys, but you said you wanna get a clearance plant, make some sacrifices, right? So to bring this plant back, you need to make sure that only the strongest, most viable leaves, shoots, stems, etc., etc., are going to be part of the plant that going forward. So we can do the same thing again, but look at the plant now. This one here is not the best, so that can go as well. But here you go. This plant has been cut back. Um, you know, you're taking all the old dead leaves and stuff out of it, making sure you have a nice, clean, plant to begin with. I'd rather have three healthy, nice shoots as opposed to six or seven that are halfway alive. You know, something like this. You wouldn't plant this straight away as I'm trying to say. Now, the second thing you need to do, and this is where it's going to hurt guys, but you have to do it. See these beautiful soon to be flowers like this? Awesome color. Uh, yeah, these go too because right now this plant is suffering. Okay. The plant needs to be brought back to health. It has all summer, if you do it right, right? To bring this back to health, it's gonna bloom more and more and more. It's stressed out, right? This plant is barely hanging on for life. We're trying to revitalize it. Don't make it have more things to worry about than just staying alive, okay? If the plant's trying to bloom, it's just adding more stress to the plant that's unneeded. All right, so the third tip is planting your plant once you've got it all pruned back, any kind of you know, old leaves and buds and stuff like that. Make sure the soil's nice and clear. You don't need any kind of debris in there. Make sure there's no slugs or any kind of pests in there. And what I need, what I need you guys to do is just kind of go through here and you see these roots where they're really kind of root bound in here. You're not having the best life, best life, right? So just kind of go through and very, very gently, just kind of tease it back to life a little bit. It's going to be fine, guys. You're not going to hurt the plant unless you go ripping, ripping at it and things like this. Make sure that the roots that you put into the soil are the best roots possible. If you have a big nasty web of tangled up roots that maybe are discolored or brown because they're rotting or they sat in water, go ahead and cut those off at this time. But right now, these are good. These roots, these are going to be just fine. So go ahead and give it a nice little clearing out. This guy's ready to pot on. This is some high quality potting soil. Mix in some, uh, some uh, cow manure, well rotted compost and cow manure. Um, you can add a little bit of some slow release fertilizer at this time. But like I said, this plant is just now coming back to life, so you don't really want to overstress it. You don't need to go ahead and really heavily fertilize this little guy right here until he gets back to flowering and overall, um, you know, restored back to the normal healthy growing, as I'm trying to say. So there you go, guys. That's it in a nutshell, how you can take a plant from the clearance rack, clean it back up, give it a new start, a new life, and get it ready to bloom for you in your garden for the rest of the summer. 
All right, guys, hope this helped. Hope this, uh, this little hillside tip uh, is going to benefit you whenever you're buying a clearance plant, help you out along the way. So until next time, guys, here from the hillside, hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.